In this video, I went on a boat trip on the River Thames. On the boat, you have the choice of sitting inside or outside. You sit inside, it's climate controlled, we've got a bar, we've got toilets. Um, you sit outside on the outside deck, it's a little less comfortable, but you can still walk around the cabin, so you can walk from inside and outside. People always ask me, where's the best place to sit? Simple answer is, let's try and fill up from the front. Uh, the only reason I say that is that uh, from there, you're going to be able to see both sides. We're also going to be able to see in front of us. And I'm going to be talking all the way along, telling you about some of the buildings that you can see, some of the sites, some of the history of London, and some of the stories behind it. So this tour is going to take about 50 minutes. We're going to go all the way down to Westminster, then we're going to turn around, go under the Tower Bridge, uh, then we're going to kick into high speed. Yeah, that's right, high speed. This man's Come. an idiot. I'm going to try it one more time. <laughs> high speed! Woo! The bar stops, beer, wine, soft drinks, snacks and champagne. We're the only tour on the River Thames that has a champagne bar. Thanks. So we're due to say sail at two o'clock. Um, as I said, the boat will pull in and we'll see it coming. Simon and I know which one we're looking for. Perfect. I want to go outside. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you are now boarding. Here we go, folks. A fantastic time. Thank you. Making our way onto the boat. It's a load to me, this is great. I won't be talking a lot on this video because Chris the guide does a lot of talking. I were hoping the boat wouldn't have a roof. They're not. One in the back, didn't you? What was the one you put in your bag? Yes. Oh, I can't get out here. We wanted to sit outside at the front, but we can't. So we had to sit at the back. Okay, folks. And we are off. Uh, and central makes the radio range of yours. 
the next person to be in is much the worst name bridge in London, it's the Millennium Bridge. Now look, this is the Millennium Celebration, the year 2000, then the immediate closure of the bridge. Uh, in 
And you only need to look at what happened in Notre Dame in Paris a few years ago. These vulnerable buildings, they really are at risk. So at the moment, that's the plan. Can anybody uh, tell me the last one? Does anybody know? No? You're going to kick yourselves. It's a classic. It's uh, Sharknado 5. Uh, right, if we look to our left-hand side, you'll see this tall obelisk. This is Cleopatra's Needle. Now, it dates back to about 1400 BC. So it's actually got nothing to do with Cleopatra whatsoever. Uh, but that's what we call it. Um, unlike a lot of our ancient artifacts in London, I'm very pleased to say we didn't steal this one. Uh, it was given to us. It was given to us by the Turkish Viceroy of Egypt. So technically, he stole it. Maybe it's yours. Um, to bring it here, it almost sank off the Bay of Biscay. Six men died trying to retrieve it. It's back in their honour at the bottom. Uh, it was also the first monument in London to be bombed during an air raid. Uh, all the way back in 1917, the First World War. You still see the shrapnel marks in amongst the hieroglyphics. Now, this next bridge we're going under is Waterloo Bridge. Also known as the Ladies' Bridge. Ladies can have a cheer for that, surely. There we are. There we are. Um, the reason it's called the Ladies' Bridge uh, is that it was built by the women during the Second World War who were left behind. Um, if you look down at the bottom, this smaller white building with the windows uh, in there, if you look at the clock towers next to the uh, dome, they've got gold pineapples on the top of them. <coughs> Still there. Uh, right up until the 1960s. It was... Now the next bridge we're coming over to, you can see it's quite empty. This is Southwark Bridge. It is the least used bridge in London, which is why it's got the nickname the Lonely Bridge. Oh, I can see you saying R over there, sir. Let's be honest, when you woke up this morning, you didn't think you'd feel sorry for a bridge, did you? But there we go, that's the power of suggestion. Um, so, so they read this golden rule. If you find yourself on Southern Bridge, you're probably lost. You're in the wrong place. Check your Google Maps. It goes from somewhere nobody wants to be to go somewhere nobody wants to go. There you go. Now, as we come back under uh, Cannon Street Bridge, you see replica, that's what's there now, but it's now a museum. We're now passing on the London Bridge, uh, the oldest and one of the newest bridges in London. Uh, I say the oldest because it dates back to about 2,000 years, it was first built by the Romans. Uh, this bridge is newer, this dates back to 1973, it was opened by the Queen. Uh, the reason we've got a new bridge here now is because we sold the last one. Uh, we sold it to an American businessman, he took it down brick by brick, shipped it over to the Arizona desert, put it back up as a tourist attraction. There's now a, a town built round it called London Bridge. Now, rumour has it, he thought he was buying Tower Bridge, which is in front of us. Far more iconic bridge, far more of a tourist attraction. He denies it, but let's not let the facts get in the way of a good story. Another great day out is, of course, the Tower of London, which is on our left-hand side. Uh, this was built by William the Conqueror after the Norman invasion of 1066. Uh, he started with the White Tower in the middle with the four turrets and we've built on it since then. Uh, it's been home to various kings and queens over the years, but it's also been lots of other things. It's been a prison, uh, it has been an MI6 training school, uh, it was a zoo for about 600 years, it was the King's Menagerie. Uh, when it was a zoo, they didn't really know how to look out for all of these exotic animals that were there. Uh, so, uh, for example, the polar bears, they open traitor's gates at the bottom, just let them go out and swim in the Thames catching fish. When they were ready, they'd yank them back in on chains. The elephants, no one's seen an elephant before, what the hell they eat? They're massive! Uh, so the elephants were given one gallon of red wine a day. That was their diet. I don't know how long they lived, but I imagine they had fun. Now we've just passed under Tower Bridge. I'm going to talk more about Tower Bridge on the way back because we're going to get a much better view of it as we come back down the river. Yeah, because we're coming into the Docklands. And each one used to have its own individual purpose. They'd be bringing goods in from all over the world to the docks. Uh, so each warehouse they might store coal, like Butler's Wharf, or they might store gold or silver or jewels or leather or silk. Uh, spices, tea, sugar, tobacco, alcohol, all of these luxury items all coming into the docks in London. Now if you look here we can see Oliver's Wharf just on our left hand side. Uh, this used to be a tea warehouse. Um, today it's apartments and it was the first of the warehouses to be turned into luxury apartments. Today you won't get to change from about two million pounds for an apartment in there. Uh, but I wonder whether the inhabitants know of its grisly history. Because for 400 years, this was the site of execution. 
Yeah. The alternative is that you hang there, suffocating, maybe for hours, you'd be in agony. It's a canary wharf that is in front of us. So 40 years ago, none of these buildings were here. This was completely flat. The building started in 1987. It was started by a uh, Canadian company called Olympia and York. Their um, real claim to fame was uh, building the Twin Towers in New York. And Canary Wharf was sort of the second jewel in their crown. Unfortunately, it's Canary Wharf that sent them bankrupt because they built this place and then we had a worldwide recession in the early 90s. Can anybody tell me what was brought into Canary Wharf? Anyone want to have a guess? Canaries! Canaries! Of course it wasn't Canaries. It's not business. You can't make money off Canaries. You can take on Dragon's Den. That's never going to work. If anything, they fly themselves. There's no point. Um, no, no, no. It was, uh, it was uh, fruit and vegetables that were brought from the Canary Islands. So you weren't far away. Just like at St Paul's Cathedral. Nothing about pineapples this time. It's just wanted a giant dome. Um, but the Queen said no. Because her house was the White House that you can see just beyond it. She said, you're going to view, spoil my view of the river. I said, no, all right, then, okay, I'll do two smaller domes that will frame your view. And that's the reason it looks the way it does. Uh, you will see the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. The Royal Observatory is really what put Greenwich on the map. It was founded by Charles II. He made John Flamsteed his royal astronomer. And it's from here that we've got Greenwich Mean Time, the time by which all the world's clocks are set. Uh, this is the original Roman city of Londinium. It is its own city. Uh, so, it, it's the smallest city in the UK, 1.1 square miles. Uh, it's got its own police, its own mayor, its own street signs, its own bylaws. It is its own city. Um, imagine the Vatican inside the uh, city of Rome. This is the city of London inside Greater London. It's also the financial district. Which is why you've got all of these weird, wacky buildings here. We've got the walkie-talkie, the gherkin, uh, the cheese grater, the scalpel. But none of them are as tall as the shard, which is on our left-hand side. And if you thought you were going to get away with this tour and me not talking about the shard, you're very much mistaken. I spent half my time up there. Um, so the shard is the tallest building in uh, Western Europe. Uh, it is 309.6 metres tall. You cannot get a taller building in the UK, otherwise it would go into civil aviation space. So unless they change the way the planes work, you're not going to get a taller building in the UK. Um, it comprises offices, a luxury hotel, uh, luxury apartments, three restaurants and bars, and at the very top, where some of you are going later, the view from the Shard, where I'll be later on. Um, it offers 360 degree views of the city. You can see 40 miles on a good day, and today's a pretty good day. Uh, so on a good day, you can see Windsor Castle in the west, you can see South End Pier in the east. So, quite a distance, it's all over the city. It was originally built by a man called Renzo Piano. And he was called to a meeting with the financiers in Berlin. Uh, and he turned up, he said, Do you know what, I don't really like uh, skyscrapers, I'm not really interested, I think they're boring. Uh, but they convinced him to do it. Uh, but they said to him, just draw us something very quickly. So we got a napkin out of this meeting at this restaurant. He drew a quick sketch. That sketch looks exactly like the Shard looks today. He just did it off the top of his head. He said that the inspiration was either a lighthouse or the masts on tall sailing ships. There's always something going on at the Shard. Uh, so I know some of you are going up for the view today, but do check back. We've got a, a fairly full events rotor. Uh, we do everything from yoga experiences to silent discos. We even have we uh, had a wedding up there. Uh, we have so many proposals, it's not true. Uh, we had uh, five proposals last night. We love proposals. The thing about proposing, come and see us first. We'll make it a little bit special for you. Um, I don't know what it is about tall buildings. People also propose on the London Eye. Uh, I'd say if you're in the market for it, come to us instead. Um, this isn't just a business thing. I told you before, the London Eye takes half an hour to go around. You can't get off. If they say no, it's awkward. <laughs> We've got lips. We'll take you, take you straight downstairs. So please, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you take all of your belongings with you. Don't leave anything behind. If you do, don't worry. Um, it's very easy to get back. It'll all be on eBay tonight. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I'm kidding. Um, but thank you all very much for coming on The View from the River. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will hopefully see you upstairs later on at The View from the Shard. My name's Chris. Uh, if you have any questions, please come and fire them at me or my colleague Simon, who you saw in the queue earlier. Uh, that is what we are here for. Uh, but I hope you all have a lovely day. If we don't see you at the Shard later on, whatever you're doing, safe journeys back to wherever you're from uh, and enjoy your time in London. Thank you very much.
Too That's the end of the boat trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Now we went to the top of the shard. Please press the subscribe button.